Well, good morning. Great to have you with us this morning. God is so good all the time. Let's try that again. God is so good. Fantastic. Well, welcome to you who are watching online this morning. Great to have you with us. And for those that are gathered here in the church themselves, welcome. And it's great to see some new faces amongst us. So hope that you're blessed this morning as you come and worship with us. And if you're new online this morning, welcome to you too. We're going to open in prayer. So I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and I'm going to lead us in a short prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather this morning in the name of Jesus. That we come to praise you. We come to bring you our worship. Because you are our all in all. And as we do that this morning, we pray that the name of Jesus would be lifted high in this place and wherever we're worshipping today. Father, move amongst us, we ask. Come and set your spirit upon us afresh today. For great is the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me read you some words from Psalm 148 that says this. Praise the Lord. That's a good start, isn't it? Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the heights above. Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all you heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them, let them praise the name of the Lord. For at his command, we were created and he established us forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and cat, all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. I think that encompasses all of us, doesn't it, somehow? I don't think he's left anybody out. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and above the heavens. And he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. So that's what we've come to do this morning, I hope, and that is to praise the Lord. So we're going to sing a couple of songs together Uh, The first one is great in power. Praise him, you heavens, and all that's above. If you're able to stand, please stand with us. The words will appear on the screens and uh, sing out this morning. Thank you. Praise him, you heavens, and all that's above. Praise him, you angels, and heavenly hosts. Shining stars, praise him, you heavens and 
Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you that you go with us. Lord, that we are never alone. That, Father, you are always by our side. For your promises says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we say thank you this morning for loving us. Thank you for pouring your spirit faithfully upon us. Lord, forgive us when we are not in that place to receive. Forgive us, Lord, when we when we fail you but Lord this morning we come and turn our eyes towards you and say we love you this morning you are our God you are the one who has called us by name you are the one who has redeemed us and so we choose to turn our faces to you and say Lord we love you as we read earlier Father Lord all creation praises you and so we join with creation praising you this morning Father, it says in your word, even the rocks cry out for your glory. So, Lord, how much more should we, that you've given voice to, that we cry out in praise to you this morning? So I'm going to invite you just to lift your voices in praise this morning. Let's do it African style. Let's lift our voices together this morning. Speak it out. Praise God, for he is good. He is good. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are the one who moves upon us. You are the one sense us for you are the one Lord who has redeemed us from the pit. Thank you. Oh Lord, we praise you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just keep your voices going. Let's praise the Lord. God is worthy of all our praise this morning. We thank you, Jesus. good to praise the Lord. It's good for our spirits to praise the Lord. It's good to speak it out. 
you know, we can internalize it. We, we're very British at times, aren't we? And, and we internalize things and, and we, um, no, I won't say what I was going to say, but we, 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 we just, we, we're just that sense that we, we don't let ourselves go. And sometimes God just wants to release, see that release in us that enables us to praise him and to glorify his name this morning. So hopefully as we continue through our service today, you'll be able to do that. So I'm going to encourage you to cry out to the Lord this morning. Um, We are live, um, but that doesn't matter. Um, And I'm sure those that are watching uh, live on our live stream this morning, that you'll be doing the same at home. We want to encourage all to cry out to the Lord with thanks and praise for our God is good all the time, all the time. Now, I believe uh, our young folks are going to leave us with Bradley. So if you want to go with Bradley, that would be great. And Eric, you're going to come up and lead us in our prayers of intercession, I believe. Come on, sir. You right? Well done. Well done. Thank you. That's okay. morning everybody let's just bow our heads in prayer shall we this morning i'm reminded of a psalm this morning that says rise up O lord confront him bring them down rescue me from the wicked by your word O lord and by your hand save me from such men and this psalm this morning remind me that terrorism has yet again raised its ugly head And we pray this morning for the family and friends of the members of Parliament, the Member of Parliament, uh, Sir David Amos, who was a Christian, I believe, killed on a visit to his constituency by a radicalised terrorist. Our heart goes out to the family. But at the same time, we also pray for those who have been misled by radicalisation, in that they will, you know, the fact that they think they will be rewarded in heaven for their actions. We know that the only true way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Yea, and we pray more and more of the Islamic faith will we turn towards Jesus Christ. And we pray protection for those that may be persecuted because of this. This also goes for all our Christian friends in throughout the world who are persecuted for their Christian faith. Now we turn to our local community and pray for those who are suffering for illness, particularly um, those known to us, our church members. There are many church members here who are not well and have hospital appointments or or, or, um, or other illnesses. And in just a few moments' silence, um, can we remember those? Anybody that comes to your mind, just pray for them, Lord. Pray for peace and peace and well-being for them, Lord. Father, hear our prayer. All right. Now, there are, there are other physical or mental illnesses or those who have worry about work issues and insufficient income. This winter, there may be shortages of gas for heating, and we pray for a continuing supply and that the increased cost will not result in hardship for many families. We thank you that the church is able to help with food parcels and for those who are dedicated in their health in this work. We thank you for that. But let's not forget the rest of the world, for those who are suffering in Africa and other nations such as Yemen and recently Beirut as a result of conflict and famine. And we pray for those who are trying to help with the famine relief. Turning back to our own country, we pray for peace who have been affected by the many knife crimes in the cities. We pray for wisdom and guidance for those in power, either in parliament, local government or law enforcement, and that they will govern fairly and care for the community. We also pray for a solution for the issue of Northern Ireland trade agreements and border issues with the UEO, this ongoing problem. We ask you to bless the work of the overstretched NHS who have to deal with these such emergencies and pray for funding will be fair 
and in an, in an equitable way. And finally, we give thanks for that we are able to join together in worship in live at Brixington and for the many new initiatives such as Who Let the Dads In, the reinstatement of seniors' lunch and the coffee mornings. We pray for volunteers to help and we thank Simon and the team and ask that you will bless them and guide them in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Eric. Bless you. We're going to uh, sing again. So if you want to stay seated or stand, please feel free to do whichever is appropriate for you. And we're going to start by singing uh, How Great the Chasm That Lay Between Us. And then we're going to sing a hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
personal isn't it that song it is very personal and hopefully you were able to sing that from deep within declaring that that is my story that is my song that I declare the praises of one who has called me out of sin and set my feet upon a rock amen well we're going to gather around God's word and as you know we've been studying uh, very carefully the uh, Beatitudes and we're going to be continuing this week with looking at uh, verse 7 but before we do that I'm just going to pray so can I invite you to bow your heads as we pray loving God we thank you for your living word and we pray today Lord as we come to it afresh Lord with all the past experiences with all life experiences that have brought us to this point. Father, we pray that you would open our eyes 
to see what your word is trying to communicate to us today. Speak to us via your spirit that we might be changed and transformed. Because Lord, when we dwell on your word, we cannot help when your spirit is moving to be changed. So we open ourselves to you and ask, Lord, transform us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So verse 7, um, depending on which translation you're reading, I'm reading for the NIV, it says this, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall show mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall sh will be shown mercy. Can we say that together? Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Fantastic. But to help us understand this beatitude this morning, we first need to understand the word mercy. People have got um, the words mercy and grace confused over the years. So let me try and give you a clear definition between the two. We've got a flashing light on the camera, and I presume that means battery. Okay, let the guys sort this out. So, to help us do that, grace, grace is getting what we don't deserve. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. For example, God gives us eternal life, though we don't deserve it. Do you get that? Grace is getting something that we don't deserve. Whereas mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Not getting what we do deserve. It's a play on words, I know, but it's actually quite important to get this. So let's go back a slide, if we may. Grace is getting what we don't deserve, and mercy is not getting what we do deserve. God does not give us condemnation and judgment, even though we deserve it, don't we? So let's have a look at a couple of, couple, oh dear, couple of biblical examples this morning that would help us perhaps understand that theme in, a, in a, a wider light. So if you've got your Bibles, you may want to turn with me to Matthew 18, and we're looking at verses 23 to 35, which is the parable of the unmerciful servant. We all know the parable well, but let's recap it so that we're all on the same page as it were. A king wanted to settle his accounts with his servant who covered, who, who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. So my Bible tells me 10,000 bags of gold. Well, that, that is a lot. And one commentator said that actually it's unlikely that this man would be able to repay this even if he worked to his dying day. It's a lot of money. But... The debt amounted, and he'd never repay it in his lifetime. So the king ordered that the servant and his family should be sold so that the debt could be repaid. But the servant, as we know, fell on his knees before the king, and he begged him to be patient with him. The king had leniency on him. The king took pity on the man and cancelled the debt. Wow. Wow cancelled the debt. I don't know. We read these words, but I don't know if we've got it. Because just imagine that you won the lottery. Not that you play the lottery, I'm sure. You were, and I don't know where I'm going with that analogy. Let me change tact. <laughs> just imagine that your mortgage broker decides to cash in and says, you've got to pay your mortgage now. If not, we're going to sell you. We're going to sell you into slavery. Well, that is a massive thing, isn't it? Big thing for somebody in that culture to have all their worldly livelihood, everything taken away from them. And then he pleads before the king, be patient with me. Be patient with me. The king took pity on the men and he cancelled his debt. His debt was wiped clean. It was no more. Then the servant went out. And found a fellow servant who owed him a few hundred shekels, a small amount of money. 
a tiny amount, really, in comparison to the 10,000 bags of gold that this man was owed. A small amount. And the fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay all that I owe. But the servant refused, and he threw him in prison. He threw him in prison. The other servants saw what had happened, and they were so outraged that they went to the king and explained what had happened. The king called the servant in, reminded him that he had cancelled his debt because he had begged him to. And then in verse 34, the king says, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? With that, the servant was handed over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. Mercy is not getting what we do deserve. My second illustration is again from a really well-known parable, and that is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, we know this well, don't we? Jesus uses this illustration to answer the question, who is my neighbor? From uh, Luke 10, if you want to follow me there. When a man was attacked as he walked from Jerusalem to Jericho, and we know a priest walked by and didn't do anything. In fact, he crossed the other side of the road, and so did a Levite. But the Samaritan stopped, took pity on the injured man, bandaged his wounds, and put him on his donkey, and took him to an inn, and paid for the bill. I wonder, would you do that if somebody was in a car accident today? Would you stop, bandage their wounds? Well, we have the NHS, don't we? We're, we're blessed. But just imagine you were on a remote place out somewhere and do you drive past? Do you stop? Uh, we were on holiday um, down in Cornwall um, uh, meeting my brother and his wife who had traveled down from Lincoln. And it was a ghastly Saturday afternoon. And uh, we thought, oh, my brother well, should be in good time. So we went out and had a little pootle around as you do. And we were driving back to the campsite, and, and Kay said to me, he said, I'm sure that's your brother in the lay, but I said, no, it can't be. Anyway, we drove on and went to the campsite. Later on, I rang my brother and said, how's it gone? He said, we've had an awful journey. We broke down two miles from the campsite, which was my brother. <laughs> and and um, he'd, he'd, his sat-nav, sat-navs and caravans do not mix. Um, the sat-nav wanted to take him up this narrow lane. Well, his caravan and car were not going to go down this lane. In, there was no way it was going to happen. And so he reversed out. But in reversing out, he got punctures on, on his car. And um, he's got a posh car, my brother. And it's got these tyre sensors that tell you when the tyre is going down or flat. And both, both tyre, was it both tyres or one tyre? One tyre went down. And it was persisting it with rain, awfully, and so he had to empty his boot, get the spare wheel out, change it, and there we are, we drove past. I said, no, that's not my brother. Didn't I have to eat humble pie? <laughs> but anyway, I don't know why I, I threw that story in there, but I did. <laughs> You see, mercy is not getting what we don't deserve. In fact, that doesn't really tie in with what I've just said at all, does it? Um, but just that sense that as the priest and the, and the Levite walked past, so I drove past my brother. I didn't realize it was my brother, but perhaps it's not so extreme, the illustration. But, but just the sense that the Samaritan man, who hated, or the Samaritans hated Jews, as you know, stopped bandaged his wounds, put him on his donkey, and took care of him. And what always amazes me is that he settled the bill. Whatever the cost, he paid the bill. Doesn't that remind you of somebody? Doesn't that remind you of Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who's paid the price for us? The debt is no more. It has been wiped clean. You see, Jesus is our living example of mercy. Hebrews 2, verse 17, it says this. For this reason, he had to be... Let me put my glasses on because my focus is going. For he said this. He had to be made like 
his brothers in every way, in order that he might become merciful and a faithful high priest in the service of God, that he might make an atonement for the sins of the people. We may never appreciate the full cost of our own salvation. We never will fully, I don't think we'll fully ever grasp how much it cost the Lord to bring us our salvation. Sometimes, as we've been looking earlier at the earlier Beatitudes, we can glibly come and seek to say sorry, but not be, you remember it talks about being mournful about our sin, that we're not always in that place of really, I suppose, really repenting for what, it, what the cost is to see us free from the sin that we've committed. And because of that, you know, we, we don't deserve the mercy that we receive, do we? Because we know that the penalty for sin is death. It's death. That's what we do deserve. But Jesus, because of what he accomplished at the cross, has made a way possible for us to experience not death, but life. What a transaction that has been taken place on the cross for us. In Titus 3, verse 5, it says this. He saved us not because of righteous things he, we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal of his spirit. In Hebrews 4, verse 16. Let us approach then the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That invitation from God to come and draw to the cross so that we might receive all that we need. As Christians, we've all received mercy, but our text from Matthew 5 implies that we need to be merciful in order for us to continue to receive mercy. There's that transaction that takes place, that we need to ex ex be merciful to others so that we might continue to receive mercy. I want to share a story with you. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? I want to share a story with you um, from Corrie Ten Boone's book, The Hiding Place. Some of you may have read that maybe a while ago, um, but as we know, it, uh, Corrie... Um, worked through and was in, um, in a concentration camp. And at the end of the Second World War, um, Curry was giving or sharing her testimony in this big hall of God's amazing grace, how her and her sister came through the terrible sufferings and persecution that the prison camp in, uh, in put upon them that they endured. And she wrote this. It was at a service in Munich that I, that I saw him the former SAS man who stood guard at the shower room door in the, uh, in the processing center at Ravensbrück. He was the first of our actual jailers that I had seen since that time. And suddenly, it was all there. The room of mocking men, the heaps of clothes, Betsy's pain, blanched face. He came up to me as the church was emptying. Beaming and bowing, how grateful I am for your message, Fraulein, he said. To thank you, to think that, as you say, he washed our sins away. His hand was thrust out to shake mine. And I, who had preached so often to the people that the need to forgive, I kept my hand by my side. Even... As the angry, vengeful thoughts boiled up in my head, I saw the sin of them. Jesus Christ had died for this man. Lord Jesus, I prayed, forgive me. Help me to forgive him. I tried to smile. I struggled to raise my hand to meet his. I could not. I felt nothing Nothing, that not even the slightest spark of warmth or charity. And so again, I breathed a silent prayer. Jesus, I cannot forgive them. Give me your forgiveness. As I took his hand, 
the most incredible thing happened. From my shoulder all the way down my arm, a current seemed to pass from me to him. And while into, and while into my heart sprang a love for this stranger that had almost overwhelmed me. And so I discovered that it's not our forgiveness anymore than our own goodness that the world's healings hinges on, but on his, on Jesus's, on Jesus's healing, on Jesus's goodness. When he tells us to love our enemies, he gives us, along with the command, the love itself. He changes our hearts. He melts them. Now, I know that that story is in isolation, and it's a, an amazing story of what Corrie had to endure even after Raven's book. What a story that was. And yet, through God's grace and mercy, she was able to extend a hand. I suspect many people would have just walked away, perhaps. Many people would have, well, you imposed that on me. We judge, don't we? So easily, we quick to judge. And yet, Corrie was able, with the strength of God's love, to extend a hand to a man who had been persecuting her. Wow. What a story that is. Now, I know, I know there are many other illustrations that you could draw from that or people's experiences where horrible things have happened to us and we've experienced uh, but it takes time for God's love to be at work in our lives to help us come to terms with the bad stuff that happens because it does doesn't it the bad stuff hits the fan and sometimes we are left reeling because of it but because of God's mercy that we have received, we are then able to extend that mercy to others. It's powerful. It's really powerful. It's not the way the world responds to hurt, is it? The world puts up a wall or builds a defense or attacks. It protects itself. Where well, Jesus is saying here, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I know it's hard. And some situations are harder than others. And it takes time. But God does, when we seek him, does give us the grace to extend mercy to others. Micah 6 verse 8 says this. He has shown you a man what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. The Beatitudes are in an order. They're in an order that help us. Once you've got one, you can then start to under, unpick the next. So we started with that poor in spirit, Beatitude number one. Then we talked about being mournful about our sin. Then we talked about the meek, restrained power. Do you remember that? Use that illustration of horses and how we can have control of the horsepower that's in the car of the engine. Last week, we looked at hungering, thirsting for righteousness. Doing all those then leads us to the next, which is to be merciful. God's, Jesus' plan is not by accident. It is by design. It's not words that are just recorded on a page, but words with a purpose that are countercultural, that are in a place that enables us to, to dwell upon them, rest upon them, but enables us to then internalize them and then become part of us. It is a challenge. It's not easy. But we are all works in progress, aren't we? If anybody's made it, even on the web, will you let us know? Because I haven't met anybody yet that has. But that gives us hope, doesn't it? That gives us hope that actually what the calling of Christ is upon our lives is attainable. Because Jesus has gone before and given us the example. And by his mercy and by his grace, we can achieve all things through the one who strengthens us. Let us pray. 
Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the mercy that we have received. Thank you, Lord, that in the place, Lord, where we, where we find ourselves, where we do not deserve mercy, Father, you pour it out. We thank you, Lord, for the challenge that comes that once we have received it, we're called to share mercy with others. So we pray, O oh Lord, move amongst us, touch our hearts, enable us to know the power of your mercy in our lives, and then to share that mercy with others. Thank you, Father. Amen. I'm going to play a song which uh, many of you will not know. It's, it's new to us, but it really um, tries to sum up what I've been saying this morning. So reflect on the words as they're, they're sung. You may want to sing, sing it if you know it, um, but let's, um, let's listen to this together. continue in an attitude of prayer just for a moment. Father, 
Lord, as the lyrics from that song says, we owe all to you. We thank you that the price has been paid, that our debt has been cancelled, that, Lord, mercy has been extended to us. Because, Father, in our own right, we don't deserve it. And yet, because of what Jesus accomplished at the cross, we can know the power of your grace and mercy working in our lives. So, Lord, we say thank you this morning. Father, we also pray for ourselves. If we're finding that we're in that place where we're unable to extend mercy to someone else, we pray that you might grant us hearts of compassion that you might touch us afresh with your love and that we might know, Lord, the power of your love working through us. Just as we read in that story with Cory Ten Boom. Father, grant us that sense of your spirit at work in our lives. And Father, where we have struggled to receive mercy from you because we haven't Lord, taken the time to invest in that relationship with you. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you would wash us afresh today. You would wipe away the stain of sin. And that we might know the power of your mercy at work in our lives. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. We're going to draw our service to a close. And I just wanted to, to raise it from that sense of not being heavy, but just to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. So we're going to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Have Gone. So I'm going to invite you to stand and let's declare this together, that Jesus is the one who set us free. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Unending love, amazing grace. So let's just close in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time that we've spent in your presence this morning. And we pray, O oh God, that as we go about whatever we have to do next, Father, we go in the knowledge that you love us completely, that you hold us in the palm of your hand. And that we are yours. Your word says that you've placed your seal upon us. So we say thank you, Jesus, for doing that. Grant that we may be your hands and feet in the week ahead. In whatever way or shape that might come. But Lord, that we would be sold out for you. Because you are sold out for us. Thank you, Jesus. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, strengthen you, and fill you to overflowing through Christ's name. Amen. We have the habit of sharing the grace together, so we're going to do that now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us, those that are online. God bless you. And uh, we're going to just continue here at church just for a few more minutes. But the Lord bless you. Thank you.